giving honor to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my pastor, Pastor Brooks of the Good Shepherd Holiness Church in Hopkins, South Carolina, Sister Branch Goodson of South Carolina Gospel Station, and everyone in his perspective places. Good afternoon. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Kingdom Word Ministry Road Radio Ministry. Welcome to the Kingdom Word Ministry, which is with you now. Welcome to the Kingdom Word Radio Ministry. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, our God, we bless your name forever. There is none like you on earth. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be graced with your presence today. Hallowed be your name. Accept our love and adoration in Jesus' name. We are here to pray, Almighty God, that you will always light our way with your presence. We repent for our sins, known and unknown. We resist the evil and pray that your light will always shine on us. Father, let Father bless the man of God. Bless us in a mighty way, Lord God. Bless the man of God that always interceding for us, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you will bless in a mighty way this afternoon. Lord God, we ask that you will guide, lead, and direct me in your path, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you for what you're getting ready to do. In a time like this, Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for everything that you have promised us. That whenever we call upon your name, you will answer us with your presence. Lord, we ask that you will come in the midst, Father, with us this afternoon. Let your overwhelming presence be made known and that you bless mightily in the service this afternoon. As your servant minister to your people, Lord, we pray that a manifestation of the power and of the glory is in this place. Let your word, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your eyesight for you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go with me to the four Gospels. Go with me to the Gospel according to Matthew. Go with me to the Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew is a Gospel written by the Jew, the Jew to the Jewish, about Jews. Matthew, the writer. He is the countryman, or in, is the reader, and Jesus Christ is the subject. Matthew's design is to present Jesus as the king of the Jews, the long-awaited Messiah. Through carefully selecting series of the Old Testament quotes, Matthew documents Jesus Christ claimed to be the Messiah. His genealogy, the baptism, the messages, and the miracles all point to the same incapable in, in and collectible conclusion. Christ is the king. Even in his death, seemed defeated in turn to the victory by the resurrection and the Messiah again echoes forth the king of the Jews' life. At the early date, this gospel was given the title according to Matthew. It was given Matthew. It was given according to Matthew. It's, the title is Kate Masha. Kate Mahayan. Mahayan. Meaning according to to Matthew. As this title suggests, other Gospels according were known at that time, the, the Gospel was added later. 
Matthew gifts of the law of the Lord. Matthew gift of the Lord was also surnamed Levi. Was also surnamed Levi. You will find that in Mark 2.14 and Luke 5.27. So I ask that you will go with me to the book of Mark. We'll talk about the book of Mark. I'll just give you a brief introduction of the gospel according to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to start at that first verse. We're going to start at that first verse. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards a hungered, meaning that he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou shalt be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, But God answered and said, <laughs> It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on a pedestal, on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the son of man, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of and the glory of them. Nine. And showed him all these things which I gave thee. If thou would fall down and worship me. Then said the Jesus unto him. Get thee hence Satan. For it is written. Thou shalt not worship. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shall thou serve. I'm read that again. Let thee hence, get thee hence, said Satan, for it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. 11. Then, then the devil led him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Thus I read Matthew the fourth chapter, 1 through 11. May the Lord add a minute blessings to the hearers and doers of his holy and righteous word. We thank the Lord for allowing us to come today to minister to you his word. Our subject will be drawn from that second verse. Our subject will be drawn from that second verse. When was Jesus led up? Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit unto the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Here go that second verse. And when he had fast forty days and forty nights, he was hungry afterwards. He was hungry afterwards. Our text is drawn from that second verse. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungered. He was after was hungered. Our topic is the 40 days wilderness experience. The 40 days wilderness experience. Subtopic, how is your Lent season? 
How is your Lent season? Our topic, the 40 days wilderness experience. Subtopic, how is your Lent season? How is your Lent season? How is your Lent season? Lent. Lent is a 40 day is a 40 day spirit <laughs> is a 40 day spirit a 40 day spirit and experience in which Christians remember the events leading up to and including the death of Jesus Christ Lent Lent is a 40 day experience spent in which it's a spiritual event and it is it's the 40 day period in which Christians remember the events leading up to and including the death of Jesus Christ whose life and teaching are the foundation of Christianity whose life and teaching is the foundation of Christian anity. Now, 40 days is called Lent. After. And it's an English word reminding us of lengthening. It's a 40 day. It is called 40 days. It is Lent after. And it's, it's an English, it's, it's an English word. It's an English word. It's an old English word. Meaning lifting. That's what 40 days of Lent. That's what Lent means. That's what Lent means. It says it's an old English word meaning lifting. Lent. Lent started from Ash Wednesday and the last days, last weekdays to Easter. Listen to me now. Lent. Lent is 40 days. And it is served during the time of God, the choosing of God's life and teaching. And it's a foundation of Christianity. That's why people serve Lent. Many times people don't know what Lent is, but that's what Lent is. Lent is spent. Say it again. Lent. Lent is the period in which Christians remember the events leading up to and including the death of Jesus Christ whose life and teaching are the foundation of Christianity. And it's a, it's a, that, that the 40 days is called Lent, and it's named after an old English word meaning lengthening. Lengthening meaning a long period of time. A long period of time. Lent starts from Ash Wednesday, lasting 40 weekdays to Easter. For the weekdays of Easter. That's how long Lent lasts. That's how long Lent lasts. Now, during the time of Lent, you have a, a congregational, which is a corporate fast. Some people do personal fast. Some groups do fast. Some friends get together and do a fast. We have a partial fast, we have a normal fast, and we have a juice fast. A normal fast is a fast that you don't obtain anything, no food, no drink, anything. You just pray, and you just pray in the word and seeking God. Pray in the word and seeking God. You're fasting, you're fasting of not having substance, but only God's word during those 40 days. A partial fast is that you're giving up something. It may be soda. It may be um, your phone. Uh, it may be gossiping. You can give up gossiping because a lot of people gossip. gossip. Um, you can give up buying things that you don't need. You can give up sweets. You can give up meat. That's a partial fast. Those are different types of partial fast. A juice fast is that you only drink 
juice. That's fruit juice and vegetable juice. No, natural. No sugar added. Just everything natural. A fruit juice, natural fruit juice, natural vegetable juice. And you do those at mealtime. But before you do any fasting, you have to pray and ask Christ what type of fasting you should do. May it be corporal, may it be self, or may it be groups of friends, or, or whoever you decide to fast or what type of fast. You always go to Christ to ask what type of fast to do. M- meaning is because a lot of times people get sick. And that the reason why you get sick is because you hadn't asked Christ what type of fast to do. You got to know what type of fasting to do. Because some people take medication, some have health status that they can't give up food totally. That's why it's best to go to Christ and ask what type of fast that you must do. What type of fast that you must do. Now, Matthew 4 do Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 11 talks about fasting. It talks about 40 days being in the wilderness and how Christ was tempted. Matthew 1, 13, Mark 1, 13 as well. And Luke 4, verses 1 through 3. 1 through 13. But we're going to talk about Christ and how he was fast. He was tempted. It says, when Jesus led up, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. And that second verse says, be tempted by the devil. And the seventh verse says, and when he had fasted 40 days, he was after was hungry. And when, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou should, if thou be the son of man, command these stones to be bread. Now, the enemy, the, the devil was tempting God. Because he knew he was hungry. He knew Jesus was hungry. Because he had been in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He hadn't ate anything. So he was actually tempting him. And was commanding him, giving him an order. That's what the devil thought he was big and bad enough to do. To give Christ an order to command these, these stones to be bread. And Christ said to him, he said, but he answered and said, It is written, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. Now, during this fasting, we not we should not be tempted. We may be tempted of food, we may be tempted of different types of things. But in all in all, when you're fasting, you're praying. You're not only praying, you're studying God's word. You're obtaining his word. You're making a sacrifice to get more closer to God. You're making a sacrifice for you to have a better relationship with God, to seek his face, to know his word, to live according to his word. We don't pray and and, and fast for no reason. You have to have a reason. That's just like if you go into a corporate fast. The pastor pray, the pastor give you scriptures and what the the congregation needs or what he needs as well because we're supposed to be praying, praying and fasting for our our shepherd anyway. We're supposed to be praying for the household for faith anyway. We're supposed to be praying for one another. We're supposed to be praying for our head that is over us. Then along with that fast, you can pray for yourself. You can pray for yourself during that fast. But if it's a corporate fast, always pray according to the scriptures that you have been given in that corporate fast to pray for the household for faith. Always start with that. Worship God. Give your scriptures. Go into, go into prayer. Give your scriptures. Study your scriptures. That, and the prayers that are being asked 
for the pastor, the lay ministers, the deacons, the trustees, the secretary, whomever that corporate fast is for. I know it's for the house of God, but it's whomever it has been given to you to pray. Now, if you're praying for yourself, it's separate. You go before God and you pray according to what you desire for him. Because you are sacrificing something so you can die to flesh and grow in God. Grow spiritually. That's what we're doing. We're growing spiritually and we're denying our flesh. Because we want to be more like Christ. We want to do the things of Christ. Because remember, we are the child of the Most High God. So the more we like Christ, like we're going to be tempted. We're going to go through because you are designed to be more like Christ. Even though we are children of God, we stray, we sin. That's why we are given repentance. So when we go into a fast, we are going in that fast to deny ourselves, to deny that flesh, to get more spiritual. That's why a lot of times people, when they go on a fast, they fast, uh, um, they fast to know more about the armor of God. They want to know the meaning of, of the armor. They want to be able to walk in the armor every day. Or, or walk having their armor on every day. They want to do the things of God. They want to be have things pleasant and pleasing to God's sight. It's not that we are perfect, but we want our Father to be proud of us. We want our Father to be pleased with us. Now, look at the second this. This next verse, this fifth verse, it says, When the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thou down, for it is written, He was given his angels charge concerning thee, and thy in their hands thou shalt bear thee up. Lest at thy foot it will bear them up at any time, thou shalt thy foot against the stone. That's thy foot against the stone. See, we're going to have trials and tribulations. We're going to go through things. But our angel will give us charge. He will give us charge over certain things. And in thy hands thou shalt bear thee up, lest any time thou dash a foot against the stone. Now, I look at that as we may err, our foot may hit the wall, our head may hit the wall, we may be backed up against the wall, our foot hit a stone, but we can come back to God because he has given his angels charge to keep us. Now, the devil know the word too now. The devil know the word. So you have to be mindful. And he know who we are. He know whose we are in Christ. But he also know what Ways that he can tempt us. You don't even have to be on a fast to be tempted of the enemy. That seven verse that Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things which I have given you, if thou would fall down and worship me. He telling him, tell, the, 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 <laughs> the enemy, the devil's telling him to worship him. Worship him. He know the word. He knows that word. He knows that Christ have asked us what Christ demands of us, what he have asked us, and we all have a choice. We all have a choice. But here this devil doing again, taking him up to a seat in the high place and showing him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Why? God, Jesus already know. Jesus know what God the Father has shown him. You know, because you got to remember now, Father God, Father Son, and Father Holy Ghost, they are not three people. They are all one person. They are one person in the Trinity. But the devil knows that. But he's still trying to tempt Jesus. He's still trying to tempt Jesus. That tempt first said, Then said Jesus unto him, 
Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. See, we're to serve Christ and serve Christ only. Put him behind you. You're going to have whatever your fast may be during those 40 days. You may be tempted, but you have to tell the devil, get behind me. I'm walking according to the will of God. I'm walking towards what I want to be free from. I'm walking towards our congregation so they can be blessed, so my pastor can be blessed. Because it, some things come through fasting and praying. It comes through fasting and praying. Not some things, all things come through fasting and praying. Then that 11 verse said, Then the devil left, left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered him. See, the devil will come to you and all sorts of things. But if you give up, he got you. But if you don't give up, he don't have you. So when the enemy got finished uh, tempting Christ, he came three times now. If you look at it, he came three times. But Christ did not kneel or not give in to him. Each time the devil came, the Lord reminded him. He, he reminded him. He said in that fourth verse, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. Then that seventh verse, he said, It is written again that thou should not tempt the Lord thy God. Then that tenth verse said, he, Jesus said, Get thee behind, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written that thou should not worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Let me read that again. Because I added a word. Let me read that again. 10. 10 verses. It says, Thou shalt. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall he serve. Shall we serve? We serve. We serve him. We serve him. So we cannot let the enemy come and try to do what he wants to do. He can't. He can't. He tried three times. And after he tried three times, look what happened. It says in that level verse, Then the devil left it, left it him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. And that's what God does to us. He came to minister to us. To let us know what we're doing. What we shouldn't do. How we can get better in things. And we need to realize that. We need to realize that. Because look at this. Deuteronomy 6.13. Deuteronomy 6.13 said, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall... Swear by his name. Ye should not go after other gods or the gods of the people which are round about you. It says in because that 15 verse said, For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest thy anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee for all from from Destroy thee from off thy face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Messiah. So we got to remember now. It says ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimony and his statutes.
according to the will of God. The 40 day wilderness, the 40 day wilderness experience. How is your Lent season? How is your Lent season? Let us pray. Most holy and everlasting our God, we come this afternoon to say thank you. Thank you for the word, Heavenly Father. Thank you how you have blessed us of the word, Lord God. We're always being reminded of the things that we need to do according to you, Lord God. We thank you for Matthew, how he opened up and let us know how you was tempted over the 40 days, Heavenly Father. And we are going to be tempted over the 40 days as well, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for this Lent season, Heavenly Father, because it showed us our foundation and why we are fasting, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, that your people and me, we we'll get to know more about you during this time, Heavenly Father, that is leading up to your death and resur- resurrection, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that someone will come and say, I yield, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved, Lord God? Oh, Father God, we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for the opportunity today to give the Lord honor and praise and to strengthen ourselves in his word. Find a word, church, to go to. Pray and fast and enjoy what God has given us, this life that he has given us, because he said, I wish that you have life and have life more abundantly. We're supposed to have abundant life, abundant life. We thank God for how you're blessed, how you keep blessing us. In Jesus' name, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. Remember, there are several churches that you can go to. There are several prayers, prayer groups that you can pray with. I'm not saying join, but, you know, it, prayer is the key. And faith unlocks the door. We have to remember those things. I'm running out of time, but I thank God for blessing us and keeping us with the word of our Lent season. I thank him for reminding us what Lent means. The 40 days wilderness experience. The 40 days of wilderness experience. How is your Lent season? How is your Lent season?